Hi guys! This project includes something that you guys like to do a whole lot, and that's mixing colors. You're going to need white paper, and you're also going to need paint in the three primary colors, so red, yellow, and blue. There is an option to where you can do this if you don't have paint. If you still want to do this but you don't have paint, you can follow all the drawing steps, and then when it comes to the, paint, the painting part and the mixing color part, you just go ahead and use your crayons and use the appropriate colors according to whatever you have in your box. All right, let's get started. You'll need a pencil, black marker or a Sharpie, paint in the primary colors, that's red, yellow, and blue, a thin brush, and a ruler or a straight edge. As an option, you're going to want white paint to make lighter shades of blue for the water. And if you don't have any paint for this project, you may totally do it with a box of crayons. And of course, don't forget water for rinsing out your brush, paper towels for drying your brush, and a plate to mix your paint on. And here's just a quick review and reminder of what the color wheel is like. You can see that it's arranged with the red, yellow, and blue as the primary colors. And then between each primary color, you're going to have the mixes of those primary colors becoming secondary colors. So you see that the yellow and the blue in that space between yellow and blue, you'll see green right in the middle. And then shades of green going towards yellow, there'll be more yellow green. And if they're closer to the blue side, there'll be blue, green. Um, all the secondary colors on the color wheel are located between the corners of the primary colors. Today we're going to begin on a color wheel project. It's not exactly a color wheel, but it's inspired by a color wheel. You are going to need a pencil, a black marker or a Sharpie. You're going to need a ruler or something to use as a straight edge. It can be um, an index card or just something that you have around the house that you can use a straight edge for, okay? All right also going to need a paintbrush. It needs to be a thinner paintbrush versus a thicker paintbrush. We don't need a big paintbrush like that today. Something about a centimeter, two centimeters wide. Something small to be able to get into small areas, okay? You are also going to need a plate or a tray or a palette. It can be a disposable plate. It can be a kitchen plate. Just something to mix your colors on. I have a palette, but you might not have one. So anything that you can pour your colors on and mix on is fine. And you need the primary colors. It can be washable paint. It can be tempera. It can be acrylic. Um, I don't know. It's not going to work with the watercolor. So red, yellow, blue, and as an optional, optional is going to be white, and that's going to be for, um, you'll see, it's an optional part of this lesson. It's gonna be where you make a shade of blue to make the water pouring around, um, but you don't have to have, um, you don't have to do this part, but if you have white, I'll teach you how to make a shade of blue with it. Okay. Using my ruler, I'm going to I'm gonna take my paper and I am going to take this paper and I'm gonna bring the bottom edge to the very top, but then I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it down just a little so that we're not exactly folding our paper in half, but leaving a little extra on the top. It needs to be a gentle fold, not a strong crease, okay? It's just to give us an idea of how to space out our paper. All right, now, on this line, this is where my, where my fold is. Somewhere in the middle of this right here. You're gonna look at this crease that we have. I'm gonna put a little dot with a pencil right there. You can barely see it. Uh, see it? Little dot. Okay. Directly above this dot, you can use the ruler or your straight edge. And you're going to put a dot somewhere up here directly across from it, but don't make it touch the edge of your paper. So, see where that is? See where this is? See where my fold is? Okay. Connect those two with the line, with the pencil. Now, this right here, and this is where a ruler might come in handy, 
I want you to put a dot right in the middle of this line. You could eyeball it or you could measure it. It's completely up to you. If you have the ruler, my ruler is see-through, okay. If you have the ruler, you can measure. I have a six inch line. I can mark the three inch line, or you can just look at it and kind of eyeball where the center of that line would be. There's my center, I have a dot. Same thing, we are going to go and make a line that goes across here. Actually, it's not across there. You're gonna make two lines that intersect. So one's gonna go in that direction diagonally, one's gonna go in this direction diagonally. Okay, so starting over here, somewhere down here. Now this can be very precise if you measure everything with the ruler or somewhat precise. This, I kind of missed my dot there, but I'm not really gonna worry about it too much. And I'm gonna make right there and right there. So I have that dot, that dot. Making a line from there to there. What I do want is for everything to intersect at some point. This line, this line, and that line. Okay. Go ahead and erase that little dot I had there that I missed. Okay. So, in all, we have one vertical line, two diagonal lines that intersect in the middle. Okay? As I'm looking at this, this is going to be my umbrella. As I'm looking at this, I feel like this bottom is a little longer than this one, so I feel like I want to extend this more, just a little more. Just because I like things to be a little balanced. Okay. Use your black marker or Sharpie to trace that. Next step is to, to make lines that connect from here to there, to there, to there, to there. Now don't make them go so far in. Think about what the edges of an umbrella look like. All right, it's starting to look like the back side of an umbrella. Use your black to trace that. We've got the umbrella made. Now we're going to make the trench coat or the rain coat that hangs out the bottom and her boots. That's pretty easy to do. Now, if you want to add any decorations to these boots, I know that boots can be really fancy. They can have all sorts of designs. If you want to get creative on those boots, if you want to put flowers on the raincoat, that is completely up to you, okay? Make a puddle of water underneath her boots or his boots, doesn't have to be a girl. You can make several puddles if you like. Raindrops. That is the basics of the drawing. The next, from now on, it's going to be painting. If you do not have paint, but you still wanna complete this, you may use crayons. For the crayons, you're going to need red, yellow, and blue. They would have to actually say the name on here because sometimes you have the red, violet, and things like that, but make sure that you have red, yellow, and blue as they are in the box. And then um, we're only gonna go into the secondary colors, so 
you're going to do red, yellow, and blue, orange, purple, and green. And that, those are the colors that you're going to need out of your box because those are the colors that we're going to make, okay? So I'm going to proceed with the paint. I'm going to set this aside for a minute just in case so I don't ruin it. Here's my paint tray. put a little bit of white here for that optional step I was telling you guys about for the water the puddle of water okay now to get you started oh I forgot to mention at the beginning that you will need a little container of water and some paper towel for drying your brush All the triangles that are opposing each other are going to be the primary colors. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a little dab of each color that's supposed to go there just so I don't accidentally mix, get myself mixed up. Yellow, skipping a spot. Red, cleaning my brush, drying my brush. Blue, so red, skip a spot. Blue, clean my brush. Clean, clean, clean. Drying. Whoops, drying my brush. Okay. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and paint those in, all right? I'm gonna stop the video. You go ahead and paint those triangles in and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I am almost done with my primary colors. This is the reason why I needed a small brush so I can be able to get into those little corners, okay? So I'm using my brush keeping it on the inside of my triangle, using my point, the tippy tip of my brush to stay inside my lines. Remember to keep craftsmanship while you're doing this. That means staying inside the lines, not looking messy. It's really important as an artist. Unless you absolutely intended to just be messy and that's perfectly fine too, because guess what? We're artists we get to do that okay each time I'm done with a primary color I have to make sure that I completely get that color off of my brush because then if I don't I'm actually mixing now my water is looking quite nasty at this point it's got all the colors in there okay the next step is going to be to mix your secondary color so I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside and let's talk about mixing up some red here some yellow here see I didn't worry about washing it when I went from red to yellow because we're eventually gonna mix them anyways mixing 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 so far this color looks a little too red orange for me more yellow is gonna make it more an even medium orange uh, still a little too red for me more not orange I meant yellow more yellow is gonna make it a more even orange for me I think I like it Okay, cleaning my brush, drying my brush. Now I'm going to make green. I'm gonna try to stay away from this part of the yellow that has red. I'm gonna bring some of that yellow over here and touch a little bit of that blue. Ah, I like that green. It's a little too green uh, yellowish green so I think I need a more medium green grabbing nope not more yellow more blue Ah, too much blue okay let's see I don't want to go to blue green if I wanted blue green I would add m lots more blue to it but I want a good medium green I think I got it like the color of grass what do you think okay you might need to make more of that And if you don't want to wash your brush and come back, you could actually, every time you make your secondary color, you could just go right in and paint it on the spot that you need to paint it. It really saves you color because all this color that I have there, I'm actually just washing it inside the cup. But I do want to take it by steps with you guys, okay? All right, now we're going to make purple. And for purple, I need red good amount of red and not a whole lot of blue because blue is a darker color than purple so it will take over fast okay 
and purple is probably the hardest color to make. I hardly ever get a good purple. I hardly ever get the purple that, you know, that we buy at the store. All right, I might have to play with this one a little more. When I put it on the paper, I'm gonna see. Oh, not too bad, it looks like a plum color. I feel like I need more blue. Oh, that's a little better. Okay. Yeah, purple is moody. It kind of does whatever it wants sometimes. Okay, there you go. Alright, washing my brushes. My brush. Now, let's go ahead and finish. You are going to paint the green between the two colors that we use to make green. So we made green with yellow and blue, the green goes here. I made orange with yellow and red, the orange goes here. I made purple with red, uh, blue and red, so the purple goes here. All right, I'm gonna stop the video and let you guys catch up and you'll give me a couple minutes to catch up as well. Okay guys, we're back. Now, I have finished adding my colors to my color wheel umbrella. I have my secondary colors in between these. Now we're going to go ahead and move down to the water, okay? We're going to do the coat, the coat and the boots later and you can choose to mix whatever color you want. Now you guys are experts at mixing colors so you can choose to make the coat and the boots whatever color you want. All right, to make, you can paint the water just blue, plain blue, that's perfectly fine. Um, but you can make also a lighter shade of blue and you just do that by adding white. So just taking a little bit, not a whole lot of blue, a little bit of blue and then a bigger, a larger amount of white. See? And mixing over here. Now I have a very, very light blue, very, very light blue, but it's not going to stay that color. So we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm not sure why I'm not able to zoom. Okay. There you go. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and paint my, ah, uh, no. Paint my water. Very, very light blue. But before it dries in certain areas, I can just add dashes of the darker. Just look, I'm just barely touching it with my very, very corner of my brush. Very tiny bit. And I can just kind of add dashes. So we have some areas where kind of see ripples in the water. See? So it looks like the water, the puddles aren't really still because we have droplets falling on them. Grab more. I'm going to make a little bit more of this very light blue with lots of white and just a tiny bit of blue. I'm going to finish painting this right here with this. Trying to get around these boots without covering the camera is hard. And then before, ah, I got on the boots. I can cover that mistake when I paint the boots. A little bit of blue, that's too much. A little bit of darker blue just to add some swishes and swirls in the water. Maybe some shadow underneath her boots. But this, you gotta do that before the first blue dries, okay? All right. What I'm doing here, I can do to these puddles and the droplets of rain. Now my droplets are really tiny, so I might have to go find a smaller brush. All right, I'm gonna stop the video. I'll get back with you in a minute. guys I am back and I am done I continued I finished my water and painted my uh, raindrops and I went ahead and I used my yellow for my coat it's the lightest color and it was the easiest to use so that it wouldn't cover up my buttons um, I went ahead and I used red for my boots but you can definitely use any of your mixed colors you can even make a shade of green or a shade of red which would be pink for either the uh, raincoat and the rain boots 
All right, guys, thanks for painting with me. Bye.